Hey there friends, Martin here, and yeah, I decided to do one of those top tip videos. But hear me out, I actually had a quite a collection of little tips that I always wanted to show you, but every single one of those tips didn't really give me enough material to make a single video about it. But then the tips piled up and they reached a magical number of seven, so I decided to pack them all into one tutorial, and it's this tutorial. I hope you'll find this useful, and let's get to it! You know those techniques you feel like they should be possible, but you simply never invest time to learn how. Well, that's tip number one, you can indeed scale down images directly in Blender. I know, right? I used to always jump away to Photoshop for that. Instead, you just go to Image Editor, find the image you want smaller and then resize it to a different scale. Having 2K or 1K textures is definitely more performance friendly than 4K images. And most of the time you don't really see the difference unless you have a large close-up of the given object. So yeah, fast and useful. Tip number two is about selecting. For example, these rigs that I use that come out of iClone, they have this very important head bone hidden right here. I parent all my helmets and head covers to it and it used to take me several clicks, like this, to actually be able to select it. Well, not anymore, you can just hover over the area you know the bone is, hold down ALT and choose from this list. Needless to say, this works for everything, meshes, curves, fields, basically anytime there are two and more objects overlapping, you can bring out this list and choose from it. Just hold down ALT. Tip number three is another small but invaluable technique, allowing you to quickly set various toggles to all subcollections in this menu. If I wanted to set a whole collection to, say, the holdout mode, uh, which pokes a hole into the alpha where the objects on the collection are, I used to go through all my subcollections and activate the icons, otherwise it would not work on the subcollections. Well, turns out, all you have to do is just shift click this top icon and all the subordinate groups will have the same toggle activated or deactivated. Time saving at its best. Speaking of time saving, it wasn't until fairly recently that I thought I needed to change values on multiple objects one by one in Blender. Well, not anymore. If you select more objects, hold down ALT and then change, uh, say, this preview as option, uh, the option gets changed on all of them at once. Same goes for every other attribute that the objects have in common, so transforms, various overrides in the object data panel, and even some modifiers, if all the objects have the same ones. There is also a way to copy attributes from one object to another amazingly fast. For that, you need to activate this built-in add-on called Copy Attributes. And then all you need to do is to select object you want your attributes to be copied to, and then the object you want to copy from. Hit Ctrl C and choose from this list. So let's try this position. And yeah, it gets copied. It's sort of like linking attributes with Ctrl L, but stuff doesn't get linked, uh, rather it gets copied, as the name of the add-on implies. Also, you have more options here, like copying transforms, modifiers, weights and more. I think that once you discover this, you'll never go without this add-on again. You know that tool that every concept artist uses to check if his composition is solid? Uh, you take your image, flip it horizontally, and check if it works that way too. Great technique, by the way. Uh, it definitely helps to avoid compositions leaning to one side. Quite amazingly, you can do it in Blender too. You basically just take your camera, uh, set negative number to its X scale value, and it gets flipped, just like that. There is also a shortcut. You select the camera, hit S for scale, X for X axis, but then you hit X again to switch to object scaling mode, which is the mode you need for this to work, and then type in negative one on your numpad. Really cool, isn't it? The last tip is all about rendering. Sometimes I hit render for my shots and I watch it go through all of my textures for the current frame, shifting through them, compiling them, doing all sorts of computations. 
fair enough, computations are important for cycles. Uh, but then the frame gets rendered and it starts the process all over again. And I always thought to myself, well, it surely doesn't need to build the same data for every single frame, especially if the conditions in my scene do not really change that much. Well, you guessed it, there is a button for deactivating it. And it is here under performance and persistent data. With it checked, the render data that Blender built for one frame gets cached and the next frame or your next render will start immediately. It is a huge drain on your memory though, so for really large scenes, make sure you have like 32 or 64 gigs of RAM. Though watch out, if the lighting of your scene changes a lot throughout the shot, or if you use some dynamics or displacements, this option might give you some weird results, uh, because it doesn't recalculate those effects for each frame. In that case, you will probably have to go without it. If you do use it, it will significantly speed up your renders. In this one, actually, it cut the rendering time to more than a half. So there you have it. These are the seven quite useful tricks and tips that I learned recently when working with Blender on my projects. And yeah, I continue crunching on Heroes of Bronze. I hope to have it ready early next year. So wish me luck. And in the meantime, you can of course visit my website, heroesofbronze.com and find all my tutorials and courses there. Uh, get inspired, learn a thing or two and make your own short film or game or artwork, whatever. In other words, stay creative, my friends. Artin out.